Okay, audio check. Set, set. Um, I did not think this was real. I thought I was being pranked, but I pulled it up. Sure enough, there it is. It is March 29th on the day of this recording, not April 1st, so I am not a fool. This is real. It really exists. Let's get into it. Association of eight hour time restricted eating with all cause and cause specific mortality. The only reason this study is getting any press is because the AHA reported it under this headline. Eight hour time restricted eating linked to a 91% higher risk of cardiovascular death. And boom, that's all it takes for this thing to catch fire and be across every popular newsroom in the US. I'm upset. A little less than when I first came across this, I had some time to sit with it, but initially I was pretty upset with the headline shock. It's stuff like this that comes out, it disseminates, and people don't know what to think. It's blatantly contradictory of any of the popular narrative out there, any of the popular peer-reviewed research out there. It's divisive and it's without context. And I think that frustrates me the most because people take this and it confuses them. And 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 because they, there's these major three letter um, organizations and institutions that report this stuff, some folks take it as gospel. And that is unfortunate. So that did make me a little angry, but I realized being upset does not necessarily make me right, nor does it grant me the allowance to view these researchers work with a biased eye only picking out what I want to see. So I'm going to give it a fair shake. As I always do everything that I investigate, I believe I start off in good faith, believing that the researchers behind the work actually wants to do good science. And my eyes are peeled on every sentence. And if you prove me otherwise, that's on you. But I start off in good faith. So let's see what these researchers are up to. And I'm just looking over at my laptop right here. So that's why I'll be looking over. But this study is undercooked. All we have is the abstract. For those that don't know, the abstract is basically a summary of the research that was done. So all we have is the summary. A summary is typical for this to release well before the actual research paper releases. The research paper we may not see until months from now, possibly over a year or so. We don't see this stuff kind of come out all at once. It still has to go through the ranks of peer review and all that good stuff. So um, for what it's worth, this is technically preliminary. That's the word you're gonna see all over the place when you look up this article. But the problem is everybody reported on it at this point, right? Even the American Heart Association, the AHA, every popular newsroom said something about it. So I wouldn't normally talk about an abstract, but I, I realize that's part of the reason I'm here to help us uh, understand these kinds of things, glean some insight and explore the nuance. So let's get right into it. I don't want to ramble. So the AHA, the American Heart Association, had a big old meeting in Chicago, my backyard. Um, I didn't even know about this. I wasn't invited. But out of the meeting, they decided to share what one of the uh, one of the present uh, presenters presented on the day. And what we're going to do is look at what the AHA published and we'll go over the actual study itself right after that. What most of the public seen is through the AHA article. So I'm gonna go over that, some of the direct quotes. We have an analysis of over 20,000 US adults found that people who limited their eating across less than eight hours per day, a time-restricted eating plan, AKA fasting, were more likely to die from cardiovascular disease compared to people who ate across 12 to 16 hours per day. The lead researcher on this study says, restricting daily eating time to a short period such as eight hours per day has gained popularity in recent years as a way to lose weight and improve heart health. However, there's that however, the long-term health effects of time-restricted eating, including risk of death from any cause or cardiovascular disease, are unknown. Researchers reviewed information about dietary patterns from participants in the annual 03 to 18 National Health and Nutrition Examination Surveys in comparison to data about people who died in the US from 03 to 19 from the CDC's database. They found people who followed a pattern of eating all of their food across less than eight hours per day had a 91% higher risk of death due to cardiovascular disease. The lead researcher says again, our research clearly shows that compared Paired with the typical eating time range of 12 to 16 hours a day, a shorter eating duration was not associated with living longer. Okay, so um, first things first, 91% higher risk. The first question we have to ask ourselves is higher compared to what? Let's see what they looked at. Participants of at least 20 years old who completed two 24-hour dietary recalls were included. 
Okay, so the first thing I want to tackle is where did these researchers find these people? They didn't. These participants in this study never met the researchers and the researchers never met the participants. The, uh, the people who are reported in this study are people who respond to a survey given by the CDC yearly. And this is a survey that examines a population's nutritional trends, uh, health and disease trends. This builds a database that researchers can use um, in their own research and report it as such. I've seen this be done before. It's uh, not necessarily a problem to do this. Let's keep breaking this down. Researchers looked at the 24 hour dietary recalls of 20,000 people. Okay, two very important things of note here. First off, the dietary recalls, and then let's go over the significance of 20,000 people. The 24 hour dietary recall is exactly what it sounds like. It's when you ask participants of what they ate in the last 24 hours. We can't even remember what we ate this same very morning, let alone all the food we consume a day prior. As you could imagine, and as every researcher who's familiar with this, uh, this survey knows, this is highly prone to human error. It just is. And now, and this is not even the biggest problem with the narrative of this study. We're just getting started. Also, the 24 hour recall is just one of three popular tactics used by researchers to assess a population's nutrition. We have food records and we also had uh, food frequency questionnaires. Of these three, they aren't necessarily impeccable, but of the three, the 24 hour recall is arguably the worst. However, at least the researchers did look at two of the participants days instead of just one, which helps a little bit because I've seen one be used before and it just yields really crappy results. The 20,000, what's the significance here? As much as we'd love to get all of these participants in a laboratory, we can't because that's hard. <laughs> So the only thing that we can do is observe these people. And that's why you get these huge numbers. Anytime you see these huge populations in a study, we're usually doing an observational study. Observational studies are severely limited in their ability to um, communicate anything other than an association. What am I saying? I'm saying that at an observational studies peak, it's absolute best, the best thing that it could give us is an association. And that's if all the boxes are checked, meaning we have really good scientific methodology in the actual study. And you have to do a whole lot of things right to make sure the science is good. And this is why we struggle with headlines because we struggle to understand the weight of an association, right? An association will never, ever, ever, ever be able to be causation. So the researchers of the study aren't saying that when you restrict your eating window to less than eight hours that you will die of CVD because they can't because they looked at one variable and they looked at an entirely separate index of what people were dying of and they made an association. Ice cream sales go up in the summer. Guess what? So does capital murder. I just made an association and you may say, Johnny, what did you didn't account for so many things? Exactly. In order to perform a solid observational study, you have to account for so many things that the researcher who decides to do one, they might as well not even do one at all if they won't do it right. Because anybody who understands this stuff, any scientific researcher, any MD, any PhD holder, whoever is in this world is not gonna give this thing a second look if the researcher does not take care of their factorization. All right, let's talk about this. There's relative risk and there's absolute risk. This boils down to a tricky way to present numbers because we're looking at two things. We're looking at folks that have a eating window less than eight hours and then an eating window of 12 to 16. And we're saying for those folks that are in this eight hour window, in this less than eight hour window, have a 91% increased risk of dying of cardiovascular disease, but it's in comparison to the 12 to 16. We're asking ourselves, 91, where did they get 91 from? Of the 20,078 people total, 11,831 ate in a 12 to 16 hour window. 414 ate in an eight hour window. 840 died of CVD. Of these 840 people, 31 of them ate in an eight hour window. 423 ate in a 12 to 16 hour window. So it looks something like this. I'm not a big fan of math, admittedly. Uh, I say that because I don't process numbers quickly. I say all that to say, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out where the heck they got 91 from. I, I lost a night in a morning. Hey, editing giant here. Um, I called my math teacher because I needed another set of eyes on these numbers. Uh, I needed somebody to check me because frankly, I was just a little bit too um, upset to look at these numbers. 
and be clear. So I was kind of seeking a red flag. Um, so my math teacher, he's a mathematician. I consider him a genius. He sees and understands numbers a lot better than I am, uh, th than I do. Um, when he took a look at it and I'm like, Hey, you know, I called him I'm like, Hey, I'm upset. Can you believe they did this with these numbers? And he looks at the numbers. He considers everything from the confidence interval to the P value. And he says, actually, you know, this 91% increase, it makes sense. And I agree. Mathematically speaking, it makes sense. Um, as a relative risk, looking at it through that lens. So what I'm gonna do in this video is talk about more of the study, but I also wanna give you guys a different lens to view this 91% increase uh, because that's usually all we get in the media um, and there's more to it than that as always. And then last thing I'll say, cause I didn't mention it elsewhere in this video is that I'm curious of the mechanism. Let's say this really is an increased risk and this isn't by happenstance in this study. I'd like to know when the research comes out, what the researchers think could potentially be contributing to this increased risk. So you guys know I'm a mechanism guy. I'd very, uh, very much so be interested in that. All right, let's get back to it. All they have to say is that they use multivariable uh, proportion models, uh, multivariable hazard models, and adjusted their final outcome. We do not know what variables they included or excluded in their model, and we do not know what adjustment they made. And we may not ever know until the actual research comes out. And even still, we may not know because it's not often that a researcher walks us through the mathematical steps and show their work of how they came up with a number. Because if we do the math, this is a relative risk, meaning we're simply comparing the two numbers. So of the 16 hour window, 3.57% chance of death from CBD. Less than eight hour window, 7.48 chance of death from CBD. Relative risk means that if we lessen our window to a less than eight hour window compared to a 12 to 16 hour window, there's actually a 109% increased chance of dying from cardiovascular disease. Now, this is before their adjustment because their adjustment and whatever variables they use actually deflated this number down to 91. Thank goodness they made the adjustment, I guess, but the problem is not the adjustments as much as it is the fact that we're looking at relative risk. Relative risk is real math, it's real science, it checks out. But in my opinion, it should never be used to communicate with the public because it is absolute garbage at telling the full story, at showing the full picture. So these percentages represent the absolute risk. A better way to help us understand these numbers is to say per 100 people in a group, eating in a window between 12 to 16 hours, we can expect approximately four people to die of cardiovascular disease. If you're eating in a less than eight hour window, we can expect approximately seven people to die of cardiovascular disease. Hopefully viewing the numbers in this way give you a broader perspective because headlines give you three pieces of information, 91% fasting and death. It just freaks people out. And yes, these numbers are legit. And if the 24 hour recall was dead on spot accurate and the researchers adjusted for every relevant factor, I'd be giving fasting a side eye right now, according to this data. But I tell you this, if I was a betting man, I'd put money on the fact that scenario is not the case. I can't let this video pass without communicating this. We don't know what these people are eating. We don't know if they're exercising or not. We don't know the strain of their relationships. We don't know if they're getting good sleep. There are so many factors that go into a person's risk for cardiovascular disease. And we're looking at one single thing. We don't even know if they know what fasting is, right? Maybe they work a tough job and aren't able to eat in regular hours. There are just so many things and there's so much nuance to be explored in here. We need observational studies, but this is the downfall of them. The lead researcher also states most short-term randomized controlled trials reported that eight hour TRE, time restricted eating, improved cardiometabolic risk profile. So things like insulin uh, sensitivity, uh, blood glucose uh, at, at resting. However, whether eight hour TRE is associated with long-term hard endpoints remains unknown. And guess what? It's gonna stay that way. RCTs or randomized controlled trials are the gold standard and they are for a reason. Why? Because we are intervening in people's lives. We're getting our hands on things that we can tangibly control. The reason RCTs are relatively short and don't have 20,000 people is because we have lives. <laughs> this goes for scientists and participants alike. We have lives. Keeping people in a laboratory costs time. It costs 
money, it costs energy, it costs resources. The best science is gonna come from when a scientist is able to exercise as much control as possible over the study itself. But as you could imagine, the more control a scientist has, then the more challenging, practically speaking, the study is actually going to be, the intervention is going to actually be. And because of that, naturally, there's just going to be less people and it's probably gonna be for a shorter duration. And that's just the plight of interventional studies. And still, any day of the week, you catch me, I'm going to be taking that problem with intervention studies over trying to find some loose association with playing with numbers in an observational study. Again, you guys heard me talk about observational studies before. They hold merit. We need them. They're important. The problem is that these are the main studies that are behind these massive headlines. Every single time, it's never been a RCT or something with some decent numbers behind them. There's always a relative risk or something like that. So um, the main thing I want to communicate with this video is to not take these things as gospel. Of course, this is preliminary. Um, maybe we may find out what factors and they used and what they adjusted for and all that good stuff. But as it stands right now, um, this isn't looking like a promising study at all. And I'm just saddened, but I hope that folks are getting this message from me and I hope that folks are able to, if not um, do their own research, find somebody who understands and is able to communicate this stuff.